When the Middle East centuries of political slumber ended after World War II, the assassins stood ever ready to block or hasten change. In Egypt, Anwar al-Sadat would pay the ultimate price of leadership, but it would buy much for his country. You cannot talk about Egypt without talking about Sadat. He's a man who created a demarcating line between Egypt before Sadat and Egypt after him. He came from um, a poor background in Egypt. He grew up in a village in Minafea in the Delta. He worked through army ranks and uh, participated in the resistance against the British occupation in Egypt. He was arrested many times. He began his ascent as a fellow officer of the charismatic Gamal Abdel Nasser, as Nasser led the overthrow of King Farouk and Egypt's monarchy in 1952. Nasser entrusted Sadat with going to the uh, Egyptian television and radio to read the first statement about the Egyptian revolution. He became his vice president later on. He was the speaker of the People's Assembly in Egypt. Uh, so Nasser counted a great deal on Sadat. With Nasser, Sadat weathered the Suez Crisis, where the United States stood with Egypt to oust an Anglo-French attack, and later the Six-Day War that saw the Egyptian military humiliated by Israel. The death of Nasser from a heart attack on September 28, 1970, plunged Egypt into mourning and made Anwar Sadat prime minister. That was the tragedy of Sadat, that he came after somebody who was so revered by Egypt. It would not be the only tragedy for Anwar al-Sadat, or for an Egypt that did not love him. The bitter memory of the last 1967 war with Israel colored all of Egyptian politics. Successful hostility to Israel stood as a litmus test of Cairo leadership. But the new prime minister took on the deadly risks of failing that test. Sadat immediately decided to take a different uh, route uh, to the relationship with the rest of the world, including the relationship with Israel. And indeed, he wanted to bring Egypt into the Western uh, world and to some extent at least liberalize uh, the Egyptian society. This made him uh, a target for potential assassins, particularly on the part of Muslim elements. The fiery al-Takfir wal-Hijra Islamic terrorists jailed by Nasser would be released against Sadat by Sadat's own hand. When Sadat became president in August of 1970, one of the very first things he did was to release many of these people from prison, and this was part of his general tendency to liberalize the Egyptian society. He uh, asked the Russian advisors, about 20,000 of them, to leave Egypt, thereby giving a signal to the United States, and particularly to Secretary of State Kissinger at the time, that he wanted to deal with the Americans, he wanted to become, if you will, part of the American coalition. He has given a few signs that he is interested in moving toward peace with the Israelis. The Israelis were not particularly responsive to his hints, and he, find, he found it necessary uh, to go to war. Uh, this became the Yom Kippur War of 1973, in order to shake up the diplomatic situation and to get things moving. The vicious three-week war saw the credibility of Egyptian arms restored as Sadat watched his beloved army storm across the Suez and carry the war to Israel. Although success would swing back toward Israel, the needs of honor had been satisfied. At the end of the war, Egypt and Israel for the first time since 1948 uh, went into direct negotiations with each other, with the United States being very much the uh, agent of uh, coordination with them, between them, and have reached a series of agreements known as the disengagement agreements. In an incredibly gutsy gesture, Sadat accepted an invitation from Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin to speak before the Israeli Knesset. It was a big political gamble, but Sadat was sincerely a believer in peaceful coexistence between the Israelis and the Egyptians. 
was not received very well at home as well as throughout the Arab region. After his speech, most of the Arab states decided to abandon Egypt and, and boycott Egypt and so on and so forth. Finally, Sadat, Begin and Carter met together in Camp David, Maryland to complete the famous Camp David Accord in 1978. This was followed immediately by a peace agreement in 1979 between Israel and Egypt. A major turning point in Middle Eastern history. Uh, it's the first time where an Arab state signs formally a peace treaty with Israel. To world acclaim, Anwar Sadat won the Nobel Peace Prize. His enemies erupted in full fury as he gained more land for Arabs from Israel by negotiation than they had won by force in generations. There were very powerful Muslim movements in Egypt, as well as in Syria, Jordan and other places. They identified Sadat from the very beginning as a potential target for assassination. There was a purge of the government to try to control this. Interestingly enough, because Sadat had a particular affinity for the military, he did not purge the military. One of the men not taken was an army lieutenant named Khalid Ahmed al-Islambuli. He was commander of a three-man gun crew with access to weapons and at an upcoming military review to Anwar Sadat. Before Sadat was assassinated, there was a tremendous roundup of Egyptian intellectuals and any dissident in Egypt. One of these people was the brother of Khalid al-Islambuli, and that brother was tortured and died in prison. October 6th was Sadat's favorite holiday because it had a huge military significance. It was the eighth anniversary in 1981 of the crossing of the Suez Canal and the Yom Kippur War. It was a day of much military activity and pomp and circumstance. The plan was that that morning, Sadat would leave his, uh, his palace. He would collect eight bodyguards, get into his black Cadillac, which had an open top, travel to the grave of Nasser, pay tribute to him there, and lay a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. At 10 a.m., he would arrive at the reviewing stand, in which he did. He was on schedule before the military review began, the huge parade. This was an enormous reviewing stand. There were a thousand people there. There was a five-foot concrete wall in front of it. And Sadat took his place in the center of the first row. A huge overfly of jets took place. A group of trucks drew up in front of the reviewing stand. In those trucks was a Lieutenant Islambuli. Lieutenant Islambuli had arrived that morning with some substitute soldiers for three soldiers that he said were sick. These soldiers were armed and they were part of the assassination team. These men dismounted from the truck. Islambuli approached Sadat and Sadat thought he was going to greet him. He saluted him and instead Islambuli pulled out a grenade and lobbed it at Sadat. It didn't explode, it, it rolled uh, to his feet. Two more grenades were lobbed, and it was only the third one that uh, exploded. But right behind Istanbuli were the three soldiers, with their guns blazing. They, uh, they came into the crowd, shot into the crowd, shot Sadat, who slumped to the floor of the reviewing stand, and wounded and killed several other spectators in the stand. The security guards were frozen for a moment. They did not defend Sadat at a crucial moment, but when they finally came to their senses, they killed one assassin and wounded three others. Sadat himself was taken to a hospital where 11 doctors worked over him, but he was dead when he got, when he got there. There was no hope for him. Anwar al-Sadat was mourned far less than his predecessor. Wrongly or rightly, it was taken that his death was more one of personal revenge than a far-reaching fundamentalist plot. After a military trial of 24 alleged plotters, 
Five assassins, including Islambouli, were executed by hanging and firing squad, and 17 others received prison terms. Sadat was buried before the tomb of the unknown soldier. The assassination brought on the last change in the Egyptian world that Anwar Sadat's enemies wanted. It moved his successor, Hosni Mubarak, further toward the west and further away from their rising fundamentalist movement. And across the border, in the Israel that had been both the trial and glory of Anwar Sadat, new assassins were rising to take the place of those who had just finished their work. <laughs>